Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Members, I just talked to uh, Representative Paymar, and he didn't like my Geraldo Rivera story from last night. But I know uh, a lot of you other did. You, you loved it. And Representative Downey was offended because he thought I, I compared Geraldo Rivera to Mary Kiffmeyer. And I want to set the record straight. Representative Kiffmeyer is much better looking than Geraldo Rivera and always will be, so Representative Kiffmeyer is not here. But I'll use a different analogy today, and it's Napoleon Dynamite. I know the tax chair loves Napoleon Dynamite. And when we were going through this bill in committee, I was thinking about a scene from Napoleon Dynamite. I don't know how many of you have seen that movie, but most of you remember Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. And I think I remember Congresswoman Bachman, when she was in the Senate, showed up one day with a Vote for Pedro shirt on under one of her yellow jackets. So she knew what Vote for Pedro meant. A lot of the people around here do too. But one of my favorite scenes from that movie is when Napoleon Dynamite is sitting in the bleachers with Pedro. And they're talking about who they're going to invite to the school dance, who they're going to invite to prom. And they're sitting in the bleachers, and, and Napoleon shows Pedro a picture of a woman that came out of a wallet. It's a fake picture. He's like, yeah, that's my girlfriend. Probably going to fly her out here, but she's busy on a model shoot, so she might not be able to come. And he says to Pedro, who are you going to invite to prom? And Pedro says, I don't know. Probably that girl right there. And he points to the girl out on the track. And it was one of the popular girls at the school. And Napoleon says, Summer Wheatley? How are you going to do that? And Pedro says, I don't know. Probably build her a cake or something. And sure enough, he builds her a cake. And he tiptoes up to Summer Wheatley's door, and he sets the cake down, and he tiptoes away. And they show a camera shot at the top of the cake. And in icing, it says, Pedro heart summer and he gives her the cake well a couple scenes later they show summer wheatley come up to napoleon dynamite on the playground and say is pedro here today and napoleon says no and summer wheatley says well can you give this note to him and hands napoleon a note and he says sure and he opens up the note and the note says no, in big letters with little hearts underneath the exclamation points for the points. And, you know, Napoleon, of course, was disappointed for his friend, but Pedro just bounced back, and he asked someone else to the prom and ended up getting a date. But I thought about this when I saw yet another effort by you guys in the GOP to give corporations tax breaks. These corporations in Minnesota... As has been stated, they haven't asked for these tax breaks. They don't even need these tax breaks. And like the popular girls at Napoleon Dynamite's high school, they're laughing at you. They're laughing all the way to the bank. Because again and again, year after year, you come forward to give something they don't need, and they're creating their jobs on their own. And if they are, they're making money on their own. They're paying less and less taxes and just to be considered the friends of some of the popular kids, you think you've got to continue to offer them tax breaks that they haven't asked for and they don't need. And they don't even show up at tax committee to ask for these. They send people in with the business partnership or the chamber of commerce say, yep, yep, we're uh, pretty sure these will create jobs. And um, I know that, that the uh, tax cuts they got 10 years ago that have been ongoing costs of $600 million to a $1 billion dollars haven't created jobs. In fact, uh, Governor Pawlenty was constantly complaining about us bleeding manufacturing jobs in the face of these overwhelming tax cuts. But never mind, we're, we're pretty sure this next round, this, this will create some jobs. Um, so how are you going to do it? How are you going to offer Summer Wheatley another cake in the hopes that she'll go to the prom with you? Well, you're going to rob renters. $70 million a year. You rob the renters. You rob seniors. You rob low-income people. And it's wrong. Not only is it wrong, but they're still laughing at you because they're getting lower and lower taxes. 
and I passed out this sheet on the floor. This was from February. With the tax break, corporate rates is, low, is lowest in decades. Now, this is the federal tax rate, but I, I couldn't believe it when I read this. It's, it's telling you that with a combined um, top state and federal tax rate of 39.2%, it says the United States has one of the highest, highest corporate tax rates in the world, which is what I hear from a lot of you over there in the GOP a lot too, that we've got one of the highest tax rates in the United States, and Minnesota has one of the highest tax rates in the United States. I honestly don't know why there are any companies here at all. I mean, they should be making a beeline for the borders, and for some reason they stick around, and I can't figure out why. And then I read more of the article, and I realize, oh, it's because they don't pay that. They don't pay 39.2%. They pay about 8%. 8% of their income they pay in tax, and I think, wow, what would it be like if I got to pay 8% of my income in taxes. How cool would that be? Oh, oh, but this is because of an infusion in cash at the federal level this year. So it's down from a 15% total in 2007. 15%. The infamous Mitt Romney 15%. I don't know what I pay in taxes, about 15%. And I wonder what it'd be like, what I'd be able to do if I paid a tax rate of 15%. Now, I, ha I read that part of the article and I thought, this is funny, I remember this being a little bit different. Why in the second paragraph of that, of that Wall Street Journal article, it must be the liberal media, you know, Wall Street Journal, the bastion of the liberal media. The second paragraph says that total corporate federal taxes fell 12.1%. Wait a second, I thought it was 8%. And that was from previous uh, totals of 25.6%. And then I read the fine print in that paragraph and that was because it was U.S. totals from activities in the U.S. So that means when they're sending all our jobs overseas, where they're sending jobs that the middle class should have to Bangalore, India, to the Philippines. I went to some call centers in the Philippines in 2008. Uh, it was incredible, all these jobs that were American jobs for American corporations going to the Philippines. Jobs in China with our tax breaks that U.S. taxpayers are giving them, they're creating jobs outside of the United States. And with that, their tax rate falls from 12% to 8%, saving themselves another 30% off the top of that. And in other years, that's the same thing as well. And I remembered when I thought about this, that that's the combined rate, but 25%, according to that article, and as is stated by a GAO study in 2008, that most corporations pay no U.S. income tax at all. I really appreciate uh, Representative Downey's uh, um, article passed out recognizing corporations, there's a handful on the sheet here, that have done a great job of giving at least 2% of their pre-tax earnings for charitable and community involvement, which is great. A 2% is great. God, if I was paying 8%, I think I could probably muster a little bit more than 2%. But it's fantastic. It's, it's nice um, that these corporations can endow uh, some foundations. <laughs> but when they throw you crumbs, you ac ac can actually look at the numbers. You start to wonder what's actually happening. And they send people up here. You know, again, I haven't seen Target Target up here in the tax committee asking for an additional tax break. I haven't seen Best Buy up here asking for an additional tax break. But I have heard people saying, no, we're going to create jobs out of this. And I thought, they must think we are fools. Because for over 10 years, we've been operating on $600 million to a $1 billion worth of giveaways. And ironically, our deficits have roughly followed that same trajectory over those 10 years we have bled manufacturing jobs. Our economy is in shambles. Now, I could make the argument that the only incentive for Minnesota corporations to create jobs is to have a high tax rate. Because then they can write it off when they actually create a job, when they're accountable for creating a job. And in fact, the governor's plan would say that if you hire someone and can show that you only hired them for a year, that you get a tax break. And that wasn't going to take anything out of the, additional, the, the bill additionally. The bill was going to stay as is, but we're offering additional money for corporations 
if they hired a soldier, someone straight out of college, or someone who was unemployed, and employed them, they get an additional $3,000 tax break. But it was rejected on a party line vote. And I thought, there can be absolutely no reason for that at all. And there's no reason. You had the opportunity, but it was because it was the governor's tax plan. And let me tell you, members, thank God you've got Governor Dayton here to save you from yourselves. Because if we get another one of these bills going through, another one of these tax bills, you're going to burn the house down. You're burning Minnesota down. We have to reinvest in what we cherished as a state and what, when we grew up here in the United States, we had decent public schools, we had decent roads. We knew that if we were a renter, we at least got a fair shake in how much taxes we were paying because we got a renter's credit, and now that's being taken away as well. And I wonder, when you look at the whole gamut of all the different pots that you could take in order to give corporations more money that they didn't ask for, just in the hopes that they'll think you're their friend, the pot that you picked was the renters, was students, was the elderly, was the people who couldn't afford to give corporations any more money that they don't need. And Representative Downey, I wonder how, how these corporations that give 2%, how much of that money is going to go to take care of the renters who are now are going to go without their medication, without their car repair, without their opportunity to get to work. And they're not accountable for that because they're not accountable to voters. They're accountable to one group, and that's the shareholders. The shareholders are there designed to boost the budget. So members, if we do this one more time, I can only hope and I believe that Governor Dayton will be there with his veto pen to save you from yourselves. Because but for that, you will see a very different Minnesota than the one that we grew up in.